and welcome to the End Time Shofar, End Time Bible Prophecy Podcast. Um, we haven't done a podcast in a while. I did one a few weeks ago um, while quarantined due to the fact that I had contracted COVID-19, um, doing much better, um, kind of really took a lot of energy from me, some other things and all, still dealing with malcongestion. Um, eventually my wife who was helping me and serving me, um, during the quarantine, eventually ended up contracting it and she's doing fine, um, tested negative and it's all from quarantine, but God is good all the time. Um, we just want to thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy and just continue to pray for those who are sick in their body with this COVID and just other things, just besides COVID, I think a lot of times people get, um, people are dying from other things and all, and um, we just have to take into account people are going through a bunch of other things and all. Um, This podcast, though, we're going to be dealing with As the Days of Noah, Magic Mushroom Murder in Miami Beach, and Astrology and TikTok. Um, I'm going to go to a very familiar passage of scripture, which Jesus referenced, um, Luke chapter 17, verse 25 through 27, um, because we're living definitely in the last days, and it's this is definitely relevant, what we're going to talk about um, on this podcast that's, that's taking place. There's definitely a spiritual dynamic that's taking place definitely here in America, that we live in a post-Christian, post-modern society where society is really headed towards the fast track here in America, being um, being more or less overtaken by a neo-pagan um, revival that's taking place, um, which in the 1960s, saw like a cultural revolution that took place, but it was more than just a cultural revolution that took place. It was a spiritual revolution where you had like a great influx of paganism and and witchcraft and other things began to um, take place in this country with sex, rock and roll music, um, the different genres of music begin to change, uh, and drugs. Um, it began to set the mode of what we're seeing now, and we're we're seeing the seeds being manifested. That, but um, Luke chapter seventeen, verse twenty-five through twenty-seven it says, "But first, he must suffer many things and rejected by this generation, just as it." was in the days of Noah, so it will be of the Son of Man. There will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. The flood came and destroyed them all. So I want to touch bases in regards to what took place down in Miami um, a few weeks ago. Um, We know that this young father... um, his name is Mr. Michael Wakeland, uh, Wakefield. Um, he was vacationing down in Miami with his wife and his one-year-old son. And this guy, Tamarius Davis, was high on mushrooms and approached the table where they were dining at and pointed the gun at Uh, Mr. Wakefield's um, one-year-old son, which is definitely demonic, Um, just just things happen. He's high on these drugs, he felt, and um, eventually um, Mr. Wakefield, Michael Wakefield, stood up for his son, and Davis ended up pumping him with a couple of shots, murdering him in front of people dining there in front of his wife, in front of his one-year-old son. Um, Just a tragic thing that happened. And they showed uh, video clips of Tamaris 
Dave is dancing over um, Wakefield and just totally demonic. And he, he said that he felt empowered to do so. So when we look at what's taking place, especially here in America, there's a reawakening in regards to psychedelic drugs. Um, we did a podcast a little bit a while ago that we touched upon. Um, Megan Fox, the actor who, who took a spiritual trip down to the Amazons and um, partook in psychedelics, um, ayahuasca, and supposedly took a trip to hell and all. But um, there's a push to really promote psychedelic drugs. Um, I believe psychedelic drugs are legal. Um, mushrooms are legal in the state of Colorado. And they're also legal, I, I believe in Oregon, any drug is legal now. And then also too, I just looked up uh, this morning in regards to uh, Miami, um, South Beach, um, the title of the article, South Beach Murder Won't Stop Florida to Push Legalized Medical um, Fizzlebin, um, which is magic mushroom. So um, they want to legalize mushrooms down in South Miami, even after having this murder that takes place. And folks, this goes all the way back to the days of Noah. Um, when you look at First Enoch um, chapter 8, and it talks about cutting roots and other things that these fallen angels, and even in the Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they talk about how these watchers or these um, angels taught mankind things, forbidden things, forbidden knowledge, but it also escalated um, evil. Um, it brought more destruction upon mankind. And we can go back, all the way back, I want to say, between maybe 1940s, 1950s, with Aldous um, Huxley began to experiment with LSD and other psychedelic drugs. Um, he began to set the foundation of integrating, psych- having a spiritual experience through psychedelic drugs or, or hallucinogenic drugs to get in touch with the gods. And eventually, in the 60s, we see that the hippies, um, the Cultural Revolution takes place, and the quote-unquote prophet of the drug culture was Professor uh, Timothy Leary, really promoted um, psychedelic drugs, but they kind of kept stuff hidden that it had a a occult religious element to it. So definitely where we're in the days of Noah because it talks about in Genesis 6, I believe, verse 5, that man's imagination was continually evil. Um, It's due to the fact that you had things that were going on, the spiritual dynamics of these angels teaching mankind all these forbidden um, practices and all, and an uh, end result, which is a shame that uh, Michael Wakefield, his son will never know his father because Davis decided to, his own free will, take these drugs and be influenced by these drugs um, by demonic spirits, open himself up to the demonic world to murder this innocent young father to deny him um, the the purpose of raising his son, loving his wife, having more kids, and uh, just a senseless murder that took place. So we're definitely seeing signs that Jesus talks about living in the days of Noah, living in a time frame where individuals are going back 
to even ancient Babylon, back to Nimrod and all, where pharmacia drugs played a significant part in people taking drugs and having a spiritual experience to get in touch with um, the gods. Um, I believe, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but even Netflix did a documentary on psychedelics where they talked to a bunch of celebrities and their experiences of taking different psychedelic drugs and them tripping and having a bad trip and a good trip and some other things and all. Um, it's just definitely in the signs of the times when even when you have individuals like Joe Rogan who promotes psychedelics and all, um, it's a sign of the times where we can see that Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21 talks about how um, it talks about sorcery, how they repented not of their sorcery, sexual immorality. All those things come into play when you begin to incorporate um, drugs. Um, it influences other immoral behavior. But I want to go on to the next part because I want to look at what's taking place with um, TikTok as a platform that, that's being used, um, social media platform that's being used that's really influencing um, young people, young adults, and it's being used as a, a cult evangelistic um, tool to draw people into the occult and the dark side. And found a few articles, but just just about a year ago or so, and then we'll, we'll go into what they said about um, what TikTok is promoting with um, astrology and with witchcraft and other things and all. Um, the Atlantic did a story in regards to the new age of astrology and just some things that just really want to touch upon because young people are starting to gravitate to new age practices. I believe George Barna did a poll and did a study that even within the church, um, young people are gravitating to new age beliefs and new age practices. So it's just not just restricted to people that are non-believers. Um, it's having a general overall influence within the world. And again, it goes back to the days of Noah, which we'll touch up on and some of the religious practices that was practiced um, pre-flood um, that God was not too happy with. But in the article with, with the Atlantic, it just touched up on things that astrology is really influencing this next generation. Um, it states that, over, it states in the article, it says, over the past two years, we've really seen a reframing of new age practices, very much geared towards millennial and young generation X. This is um, Lucy Green, the worldwide uh, director of J. Walter Thompson's intelligence groups, which tracks and predicts cultural trends. So we see within Generation X and millennials, they're gravitating to astrology, um, which leads me into the article that was done just a few weeks ago, um, CNN, they did an article, online article entitled, Witch Talk, Amid Uncertainty and New Fascination with Astrology and a Cult Bubbles Up. So people are leaving the church, young people are leaving the church, and they're finding alternative spirituality um, it doesn't matter what type of ethnic group that you're in, um, even within um, the African-American community. People aren't going to your traditional Christian churches. Um, they're gravitating towards 
um, traditional African religions, witchcraft, and other things and on. Even up on this article, um, it, it talks about some of the R&B singers, um, SZA and Kalani, they're, they prescribe themselves to astrology. So you see this boom in astrology and even within the article, it says, for some, seeking astrological insight is a daily routine. Astrology app CoStar has been downloaded 20 million times nearly every three to four seconds in the United States with no spin on marketing on spokesman told CNN. So we see like this boom in, in especially during a pandemic, of alternative spirituality. Um, Here's another quote. It says, Kimmy Manna runs a spiritual wisdom account on Twitter and increased her following from 50,000 to 300,000 over the course of the pandemic. Manny said, while many people or relationship with astrology is superficial, as through interaction with astrology memes and Twitter, that actually makes the study of the practice and like more accessible. So it's making it more accessible. So when we're connecting the days of Noah, um, some of the pre-flood things that these fallen angels taught mankind was astrology. Um, When we look at Jubilees 8, 1 through 5, and it says, Canaan grew... And his father taught him writings, and he went to seek himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. And he found writing, which was the former generation had carved on the rock. And he read what was there on, and he transcribed it and sinned owning it, for it contained the teachings of the watchers according with which they used to observe omens of the sun, moon, stars, and all the signs of heaven, And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it, for he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on the account. So here we see pre-flood, these things that are happening, um, pre-flood astrology. You you can look at Enoch, 1 Enoch, uh, chapter 8, verse 3. It talks about Amaros taught how to resolve enchantments. Bacharel taught astrology. Cabal taught constellation or signs. Timil taught the knowledge of clouds or astrology. Azardel taught the courses of moons. So during the times of Noah, they would set certain things in motion, certain times and seasons to do occult rituals and other things and all. When you get to Nimrod and the mystery religions and the Chaldeans, that's where the Zodiac comes into place. Um, You can see astrology has influenced different cultures in China and Greece. Um, Here with the Aztecs, um, you see all the different things that takes place with astrology. Now, when we look at Hippolytus Heresies 4 and 3, he says that the horoscope was invented by the Chaldean astrologers. So, so um, again, when Nimrod comes into the place and his wife Semiramis, uh, they come up with this religious system. Part of the religious system is astrology. Now, early church fathers, they saw through that this astrology is demonic. Uh, When we look at Titan to the Greeks, uh, 9, it says demons invented the concept of fate with astrology to enslave man into worshiping them. And when we go over and we look at the worldview of how the world is ruled by principalities, are these 70 spirits that um, Deuteronomy 32 and 8 talks about how God allowed it 
um, these the sons of gods to be over these nations. These are evil spirits that lead people astray from the truth, lead them away from Yahweh, lead them away from Yeshua, from learning the truth. So we see a, a cult explosion that's taking place within our country that people are gravitating to occult practices like astrology, like witchcraft, uh, spiritualism, just things that are taking taking place. So we have to be aware of the signs of the times that we're living in, and we have to know that in regards to astrology, um, there's been studies where where people who've gone to an astrologer and they re- received information, you're going to die on this date, and then the person goes out and commits suicide. That's because they've given themselves over to a deceiving spirit into believing Satan's lies, or you get this advice through astrological um, advice through an astrologer saying, um, again, this is stuff that's been proven that your your child's going to have a terminal illness and the parent goes out and they kill the child because they receive this advice. And we're just surrounded by so much things that are going on with astrology. Um, Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich were very much heavily into the occult and was very much influenced through astrology. So you have people that are giving themselves over to horoscopes or their daily readings, um, and they're being enslaved by demons, spirits, to believe a lie and not the truth. And astrology is growing, witchcraft is growing just by the articles that we're looking at. But we have to know the time and season that we're living in because even it says in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, they're not going to repent of worshiping demons. Um, They're not going to uh, repent of their sorceries, um, their drug use, other things and all that are, are taking place. And this is just formulating the end times. And we're definitely seeing a rise of this stuff and the Bible, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled and this is definitely a apocalyptic times that we're living in because we're seeing the fulfillment of, of scriptures and Satan's really going hard after this young generation and he's really influencing them and it's like a vacuum of because most churches are so shallow in their teaching and they're not really teaching the full counsel of the word of God and people aren't seeing the love of Christ. They're not seeing the fruit of the spirit. They're not seeing things, um, the manifestation of people really walking in holiness. People are like, man, this Christianity stuff is, is a joke. I'll go and find something else. But with technology, with the internet, and with smartphones and other stuff, people have access to so much different information. They're coming into alternative um, things and alternative religious beliefs where the church, we're going to have to really try to step up and do a little bit better on how we conduct ourselves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something. Again, this has to do with the Zodiac and Nimrod. This is from um, the book of Jasher, verse 9, or chapter 9, verse 7 through 8. And it reads, And the king Nimrod and all of his servants in terror with all of his household were then 
the first of those that served gods of wood and stone, and Terah had 12 gods of large size and made wood and stone after the 12 months of the year, and he served each one monthly. And every one month, Terah would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods. Thus did Terah do all his days. So we're definitely living in the last days. We have to stay prayed up. We have to really pray for this generation. God bless.